Namaste, Rajiv. Hi, Sarita. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. What a, what a pleasure to have you with us. You know, I know you as a, that maverick who's interested in startups and investing. But why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do before I grill you on ethics and AI? Hey, Sarita. First of all, um, I'm honored that you invited me for this interesting discussion on AI ethics and AI. Right, something which is probably top of the town, but I think let's demystified uh, as we speak today. Uh, something about me, I, I actually have kind of, you know, I keep telling people, it's a bunch of experiments. If you have failed, if you have worked, we have worked so, uh, so, so, right? And these experiments include uh, working at a commercial bank, working with a strategy consulting firm, one of the blue bloods, and then actually operating a manufacturing unit. That's how I actually started my hard career and uh, working at a startup, multiple startups in different capacities, uh, being an advisor to an incubator, working on cross-border m and in the Global South Corridor, which is India, Africa, Latin America, across different industries. Mostly, however, mostly it's uh, auto, autocoms, energy, power equipment, you know, any industrial goods, that's something very close to me, you know, specialty chemicals and off late enterprise tech, tech as well. So I've been in also investing very actively in the startup ecosystem in India, I have begun to extend that in Africa and I'm doing, I will be doing a lot more in Africa in the next year or so. And uh, something very interesting is uh, before all this, you know, hashtag unicorn and all the startup buzz in India was there. Uh, I think 2013 is when I started as an employee, early employee at an enterprise tech startup, doing BD for them. Quite under the radar, that's how I've been, that's how I like to do, uh, be even now, correct? And I have been actively investing since 2017, right? In different uh, forms and factors and, you know, different uh, uh, industries. So that's where I am, Sarita. Yeah. yeah, interesting, interesting journey. So in this journey and along the way, especially, you know, with startups, how do you see AI playing a role? I come across a lot of startups, you know, everyone, when they're pitching, they say we have an AI algorithm behind it. Just hmm. wanted to get your thoughts on this. Sure, sure. Slightly longish answer to this, right? And this is, uh, think about this, right? Uh, hmm. uh, AI is such a buzzword today. It's been used as a quote-unquote media narrative just to catch eyeballs. Right. But it is extremely difficult to be truly AI powered, right? To have something uh, which is AI driven uh, in your product or platform or the organization, right? And AI is not something new. It's absolutely not something new. It's 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 in a new package today, right? Uh, AI models were being used, uh, you know, by large companies uh, way way before, correct? Right? Uh, I think startups and small companies have started to leverage uh, it because of uh, lower cost of connectivity, lower uh, you know hardware costs, uh, and the availability of big data that is there. So that big data needs to be churned to meaningful insights for business decisions, right? In different aspects, uh, it could even be technical product engineering uh, decisions as well, right? So. Uh, that's where the wave of AI is, right? Uh, that I see right now. A lot of, lot of buzz, buzzword. Uh, and that buzzword takes me to, so I've, I, I'll draw something from my, you know, investing journey, right? I've done about 30 plus investments from my personal capacity, uh, you know, uh, with syndicates, outside syndicates, with, you know, uh, like all put together. And having done that, I would have probably evaluated more than 800 pitches safely. Right. As a safe number. And each time I, I come across, oh, AI, you know, I it's for me a double alert. Right? And I dig deep and ask, OK, where is the machine learning first? For AI to work, you should first have machine learning. You should, which means in simple terms, you should have a very large set of data on which learning, understanding and, you know, regression, statistically some regression that has happened. Some pattern recognition has happened. Let me put it like that. Right. And that pattern recognition could be for consumer behavior, it could be for product lifecycle extensions, could be for pricing, could be for competition analysis, could be for new material, could be anything, could be for new drug discovery, could be anything, correct? So the, the machine learning most of the time is just not there, right? Or it's there, but it's very anemic. So I think without which AI is not possible. And what is AI in simplest terms? 
is basically a set of rules, set of codes uh, that take a decision on your behalf, right? And actively that quality of decision making keeps improving automatically. And that's what it's called an AI algorithm. And there are different algorithms for AI to work, right? So AI comes, which means the other way to look at it is AI comes in different forms and formats of algorithms. And algorithms is, uh, you know, a set of decision trees that keep evolving, keep learning from the from the data sets, mm. right? So there is the data science of it, and then there's a decision science of it, mm. right? And in between, you have the the solvers or the compilers or the or the calculators. I'm I'm just keeping it very simple, right? I'm not getting deeper. So when we go deep and look at these uh, aspects, are they present, not present? Then the conversation just fizzles out in most of the cases, and that's why the only thing I've seen a lot of true AI kind of, uh, you know, uh, startups or models at play. Maybe I can just count one or two, uh, you know, and maybe that's a percentage, right? So you can take it as a percentage. So maybe two or three percent, which were truly leveraging something. Everyone's else, it's a, it's, a, it's a narrative. Or in the process of building an AI. I'm not saying they're not, but they're in the process on the journey of building some AI tools. You are bringing in a perspective, which I don't think is uh, going to be well accepted. Uh, you know, primarily because the word out there is that AI is just about integrated into everything and all startups rely or when they pitch, they pitch the whole AI piece very strongly. But in reality, as you say, it could still just be on the surface as a narrative. And that for me itself is an ethical consideration to be thought of, right? Yeah. When you are pitching something which is not in real, the real depth of what your whole Correct. process design is there i mean there it's a you begin on a wrong ethical pitch note right right Correct. in this rush to innovate you know because i just see startups rushing in to bring we have an innovative idea we want it to be out there how do you think they can remain grounded where ethics are concerned wow that's that's actually a habit uh that's a mindset you know and old habits die hard or the other way to look at it is very difficult to change mindsets. You know, that liminal thinking, as a, you know, as, as the term goes, it's very difficult to happen. Because everyone wants to, there is a form of feeling around. Mm. Everyone wants to be a part of it. Everyone wants to be catching the bus, catching the train. No one wants to be left behind. Whether, wherever that train goes, however far that train or bus goes, but you want to be a part of it, right? Uh, that's a larger herd mentality. Few folks who go against the grain i think uh perform poorly in the short run but i think over the intermediate to long run uh they tend to outperform all the wannabes right so you got to take a conscious call uh do you want substance or do you want a narrative mm -hmm. right uh if you have the substance narrative uh takes care of itself if you only have the narrative substance cannot take care of itself Right, substance takes a lot of time to build, and then post which uh, it starts to pay, you know, reap dividends. Uh, let's let's I'll I'll throw this with an example, right, and a very unconventional or maybe unpopular example. Use the right operative word, and I'm okay to be unpopular. It's fine. Uh, it, you know, what is one of one of one of the use cases for AI is probably for predictive maintenance right of of assets and then based on the predictive maintenance the ai also extends itself to probably making some decisions is predictive maintenance new well no not really right if you go a few i mean couple of decades back predictive maintenance for aircraft engines mm. and the maintenance repair overall intervals of an aircraft was already being deployed at large com large commercial scale correct so uh, we have to really think and pause when we when someone utters the word AI. Hey, it's not something new. What is going to be new is a new application that you would probably figure a new use case that you will figure the substance more or less the pattern of the substance more or less stays the same, right? Which means you have to contextualize the data, contextualize the learning for the use case you're pursuing. Like a lot of aircraft engine uh, OEMs did. Uh, you know, or have been doing for the last couple of decades, at least that I'm aware of. And to draw inspiration, you have to turn for any industry, at least that's worked with me, you have to turn to what the aerospace and defense industries do, 
they are the they are essentially the flag bearers of frontier tech anything that happens there 20 years later or whatever on an average 2022 20, 25 years later the rest of the industries adopt at large scale right so that's one of the mother industries uh, and the example i took is also from a mother industry right uh, so you have to really to answer your question now uh, it's it's basically mindset shift of mindset is required yeah, right? it is also said it takes years to do that. Correct. So maybe easier to build the fundamentals with the right values and ethics. Yeah. 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 My, exactly. my no, very, very interesting perspectives, Rajiv. And as we close, my question to you is what do communities like FIA can do more uh, to, you know, sort of ensure that ethics get built in your, or it's a subject that everybody is, it's right as a first thought and not Correct. as an afterthought. Correct. Pick a use case, pick a user industry, and then try uh, deducing it, uh, going deeper into it, and figure what is, where is the actual use of an AI, mm -hmm. right? And where does that AI or data marry itself with ethics, which means doing the right thing, which is substance. And what is that right thing? And that, you know, I'm sure there's in life, there's nothing right or wrong, but right is a very, very subjective uh, kind of uh, element, right? But for if for, you have to figure who the stakeholders are and if it is right for those stakeholders that's ethical right and each time the context of right changes the context of ethics changes right so maybe fia can look at pick user uh, user industries pick a use case do this deep dive on an ethical framework of what is ethics based on who the stakeholders are now or who the stakeholders could be later on and drive uh, uh, AI models, machine learning models, you know, with the engineers and the data scientists, uh, uh, you know, thereafter. So we need a uh, uh, kind of conscious, pro uh, you know, uh, engineers, uh, conscious designers, product designers, uh, who, who do the first uh, tilling of the groundwork, then followed by the engineers and data scientists, uh, you know, to start building it up. Right. I think that will be a very interesting. So workshops, discussions with corporates uh you know and having a very open uh kind of a dialogue uh is something that fia can definitely know thank you so much i think there's a lot of food for thought over here that we need to mull over and we may come back to you for some more deeper conversations on this thank you very much for your time pleasure pleasure sarita thank you so much